Welcome back to the RPG Maker MV tutorial series level 2. In the previous episodes we created the outline of our maps. Now all we need to do is have a start scene and an end scene and then we have the full outline of a basic game. So let's get into the start scene. Here we are back in RPG Maker MV and if you recall we had our player starting point in the fishing village to do our testing. Where do we put our start scene? Well, let's put it on the start map. We'll put our player in the middle, why not? And we'll press play to see what happens. Once again, this is the advantage of doing our playtesting uh, activity so that we don't have to see the icon uh, and the menu every time we try to playtest. As you can see, nothing's happening. It's a black screen, that's because the tiles are transparent, there's nothing to show. We can't move, we can see our player and we can't move. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a little intro scene and that might be something like we could show some text or we could show some scrolling text. So let's show some scrolling text and if you recall in the 15 minute uh, game in 15 minutes we did save the world. Let's apply that, click OK, test it. Okay, now we've got our character and nothing's happening and that's because we didn't set our event to auto run. We need to click auto run, apply that, test it. Okay, now it will auto run as soon as the level starts. But we can still see our character and it keeps scrolling over and over and over. So how do we fix that? Well, to get rid of the character, the first thing we want to do is set the character to transparent. So we find the change transparency option set it to on, click OK, click OK, and now when we hit play, characters transparent, save the world, we'll scroll through. While we're here, let's update the name of our event. We'll call it Start Game. And now we want to do something like asking the character what their name is. So let's show some text. What's your name? Click OK. And then we can do player input. It's on tab 3, name input processing. I might change that to something like 16. And you can select this for any actor, which is any of the members of your party. And in this case, Harold is our default first, uh, a default hero character. We'll play test this really quickly just to see where we're at now. So we go save the world. Then it says, what's your name? You can enter, I believe we decided on Hardy or Haradi in this case. Why not? And then it's going to keep repeating that. So, to get out of the loop, let's transfer the player to another map. Pressing enter to bring up another option. Transfer player. And we'll go to the fishing village. Down the bottom, at the pier, just off the boat. Fantastic. We're moving up because we've just come off a boat and here we are. Let's click play. Okay, here we are, save the world. What's your name? Harold's fine. And we're in the map, but we're invisible. What happened there? We didn't set the transparency back to off. So we'll add another item, change transparency, off. Click OK, OK, and let's see if this is working now. And here we are. Right, so if we want to do a full test, let's go back and Go to Tools, Plugin Manager, Made with MV on, and Yummy Skip Title off. Uh, if you don't have Yummy Skip Title, you should go back and watch the previous episode as it shows you how to get, get it. And now we can watch the full introduction with the menu when we start up. So we've got our icon. We can work out how to change that later on. There's the name of our game. It's still called Level 2, New Game and there's the theme song and the background. We have our introductory text. What's your name? 
and we start up and we've got our four characters. So let's fix up a few things. It's also very silent when we start the map. So let's just fix a few of these bits. So the first thing we want to do is go into our system settings and we'll fix up our theme songs. Now the theme song that we might want to use would be something like this for example. A bit more mellow. Let's call our game something interesting. Change the name, the game title to say Avalonia. Now when we start, uh, my preference is actually not to run around with the different followers. You can switch that off here. You can set start transparent in the beginning of the game. However, that can cause issues when you're play testing. So I just leave that off. I like to change my airship to a bat, just for fun. It works exactly the same. I also actually just like to remove the part starting party, as that gives us the opportunity to set to meet some new characters and some new players who can join us. We want to change the title screen. Let's change it to something like the Cross Swords. We'll apply all of that. While we're here, we can customize a couple of other things. So, for example, cursor two, bit irritating. Cursor one is probably a little bit less in your face. Decision one, bit annoying. Decision two, a little bit less in your face. Uh, I also kind of like the bell sound. Why not? Cancel one. Mm, bit in your face. I actually kind of like to do a little swoosh that comes with the wind. Why not? Buzzer one. Bit in your face. All a bit in your face, really. Maybe something like a cancel. Switch them around. You can apply those. Now the next thing to do is just spruce up the start menu, uh, the start map. This theme song will only play for the menu. So let's set a some background music to play when we start the game. Now what we can do is we can actually just continue with the theme to music and that should continue on playing in the background. That means that the menu will flow through to the start scene. We can also set up a an image for the parallax background. So that means that instead of being blank we can now show something a bit more interesting uh, when we go to start the game. So if we click OK for that, that will actually show on our start map. We also want to set some music in the fishing village as that will be part of our starting routine. And so we'll play some background music and I think perhaps town 2 or town 1 because it's a bit sleepy village. So we'll set that there. And we want to make our starting a little bit more interesting, so we've just copied some text. And we can set that up with something like many ages past, fairies roam the world, etc, etc. That gives us a bit more of an interesting starting story. Now because this is all a bit longer, what we might want to do is just insert another option up here, press enter there, show choices, and we'll uh, we'll put yes and no. Okay. If we want, this will be a yes no choice for watching the introduction. So we'll add another uh, message up here, show text, and we'll put something like watch the intro. Click OK. So if you watch the intro, yes or no, if you say yes, it will go through that. Otherwise, it will just jump straight to the name entry. As you can see, our new introduction says something along the lines of This is the tale of one of the greatest heroes of the first Dark Age, whose rise to greatness started with the humblest of beginnings. What's your name is not really appropriate. Let's change that to something like, by pressing space, I'll just change that to Our hero's name was... And then that gives the, a little bit more of a flow. Harold is not the most exciting of names. I'm going to change the default character's name. Actor. What we can do is you can delete this and leave it blank, but I'm actually just going to change it to our hero. 
you can put anything in there that you like, but this just works because uh, with playtesting, our hero shows up in various conversations. And we're going to see how that works now. So after we get the player name, we can press enter and we can put in some text here that says something along the lines of, now this will give the hero player's name. So it's the name of actor one. And actor one is the main actor that we're using, which is our main character. So our hero's story starts in the small town of Wayport. Click OK. One more thing you like to do is a, you might like to do is a really quick uh, introduction is to give players the option of choosing between male and female. So our hero was male, our hero was female, you could call it boy or girl or whatever you like. We might uh, disallow the cancel choice and that means that you have to choose between male or female. Sticking with the same kind of theme of our hero's name was, we can actually put this in here, copy paste, press space, and we could put slash and ones was, and that would be, so now our hero was male, female, and when we do that, we can now choose the image for the character. So, simply press enter to get a new control, go to tab 3, and change actor images. We can see our hero, and now we can choose various actors. We want to make sure that we get one that has a battler, just in case we want to use them later on. So, for example, we might choose actor to one. So that is actor to number one. And that means that we have to choose the character sheet for actor to number one. Okay, so that's our new male character. Same thing again. We can control C, control V to change our female character. Press enter, uh, press space to adjust that. Let's find a battler, so maybe actor two, two. And same again, actor two, two. Actor 2, 2. And there we have a new uh, gender selection and that gives us the option to choose our character. So, let's test what we've done. Click OK and play. We're going to go through this one more time. And here we go, we have our new background, we've got our new name, new game, we've got our new sound, Watch the intro. Yes, we want to watch the intro. Wow, this is such a great introduction. Who came up with this? What a genius. And our hero's name was. And now we can right click. We've got a new sound there. Okay. Cool. Might need to change that acceptance sound. It's a bit excessive was female. And there we are. There's one more thing is that we might actually want to change the order of the gender selection, but we can hear our sounds in the background and now we're running around the map and we now have a new character image. Okay, so we've tested our introductory screen. We're pretty happy with that. Let's go back to our plugin managers. We'll switch off the icon and we'll switch yeah, me skip title on so that we can do rapid play testing again. So when we went into our game, we noticed that we skipped the intro. Our hero's name was, and we already have an image here. And if you decided to have a female hero or a male hero, the image would be different. So that's going to be a little bit incongruous. There's a couple of ways that we can solve that. First way we can solve it is by going to our actor hero and actually setting the default hero to none. If I click OK and click apply now, when I press play, what we'll see is that there's no image there. That's great. 
and then our image comes up. The problem with that is that if I do playtesting on another map, say I start, I just want to set my player starting position here, and I go to press play, I don't have an image, which means that playtesting is going to be very difficult. So there's another way to do it, which is just to move our gender selection before the name. We can get tricky, or we can resolve that later on, but just for now, let's do that. So I'm just going to very quickly put my hero back. I'm going to choose the default actor 2 one that we decided to use for the male character. And I'll just leave actor 2 one There we go. Okay, now how do we fix up this gender issue? Well, the very simplest way to do that is simply to put the select the uh, our hero was and male and female. I'm going to put that before this. Now because we won't have selected a name, I have to change this back to our hero. Our hero was male, female. We'll choose the image and then we can now say our hero's name was and then we can choose our name and continue on from there. So what that will look like is this. Skip the intro. Our hero was female and there we go. Now we can show the correct image for our female character when we start. Cool. Can now start the game in the small town of Wayport and it's a little bit more immersive. Now there's a lot more you can do with start screens but this uh, tutorial has already gone on for long enough so we're going to wrap that up here and in the next round we'll look at making the ending. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons as they do help with the algorithm. Now it's your turn to go make a game. See you in the next one.